of momentum. You know, we've talked about moving in a straight line. Momentum is mass times velocity or weight over gravity times velocity. What about when you're moving in a circle? If you're moving in a circle, you know, there's a tendency to keep moving in that circle, and that's angular momentum. It's kind of like linear momentum. It's a little bit different in that we use the angular terms instead of the linear terms. So, for example, let's see, we've got, uh, we've got a car coming. Well, we'll just keep working on that. Um, angular momentum is given by angular momentum is given by big L. Now I'll call that angular momentum. Thank you. Oh, you registered at that big building over there. So how do I get over there? Drive right through the camp. No, take a left. Sure. Angular momentum. Given by that L. And here's the combination. Instead of instead of uh, mass times velocity, we use the angular equivalent of mass. We use the moment of inertia, which you got towards the end of uh, 171. Moment of inertia. And then instead of linear velocity, we use the angular velocity, velocity which is given by omega or, you know, as you recall, uh, butt cheeks. And the units are going to be, uh, let's see, kilogram meters squared. Because, uh, well, I'll tell you right now, the moment of inertia it's uh, like, you know, some fraction of, uh, let me make that squiggly line, mass times the radius squared. As you're moving, the further out you are from the center, the more, the more moment of inertia you have. It's a combination of mass and your distance from the center. And, you know, sometimes it's like one half mR squared for a disc. For an article like this uh, chalk moving around, it's mR squared. Uh, the tables are in the book. But it's proportional to mr squared, the mass times the radius squared. So it's going to be like kilogram meter squared. So let's see, I is kilogram meter squared. Omega is uh, like radians per second. So that would be kilogram meter squared per second. Or, we'll talk about this later, you can rewrite that as joules times seconds. Now in English units, that's going to be slug times feet squared per second. And I can rewrite that too. I can pull a pound out of there and I can write it as foot pounds per second. So again, you know, if we look back at the equation here, compare it to linear momentum. Here's angular momentum. Here's linear momentum, P. P is equal to mass. And here you got moment of inertia, the angular equivalent of mass. And the angular velocity, well, that's like, that's like linear velocity. The units are just slightly different. You got another meter in there. So let's do an example. Let's see. What should I do? I got a disc. I got a disc that's rotating. This disc right here. It's rotating and it's got a mass of, um, let's see, it's got a mass of about a tenth of a kilogram. Okay, a tenth of a kilogram. So let's run this example. Got a piece of chalk and it's rotating. So how do you do that? Rotating. Make sure you can write that down. There's my chalk, and I've got a I've got a mass for my chalk of uh, 0 0.10 kilograms. And uh, it's got a radius. My radius there. It's got a radius of uh, how uh, 0 
meter. So a quarter of a meter. Okay. And it's a cylinder. And it's rotating at a speed of, uh, let's say, let's say the moment of, the angular momentum, excuse me, the, ang the angular velocity is uh, 50 RPM. And that's revolutions per minute. Now, the first thing I want to figure out is what's the moment of inertia? So, I better move over there. <laughs> 